Today, I'm not going to build props. I'm going to upcycle some old tech. Let's go. Hey, how's it going? Anthony Fro here, Create Sci-Fi. Well, today I'm going to upcycle some 90s, early 2000s tech, and I'm going to make uh, some props for my new film that I'm working on. So typically, I'll build stuff on this channel. Uh, we just did the whole console. We made that from scratch. But also, I wanted to show you some other options that are not necessarily building. They're upcycling. And, and it's kind of the same theory when I do my dollar store builds. It's like you're looking for a silhouette. You're looking for something that represents visually what you're thinking. And you're just going to tweak it, stick two things together, and get the result, right? So I have this old worm processor. It's got the right look. Obviously, we'll get rid of the, the branding. I might 3D print a couple little doodads to, because this is obviously for a floppy disk, right? Little things, get rid of the Panasonic there, but I'm not gonna change it too much. But the practical thing that I'm excited about is this old crappy uh, digital photo frame. So what I wanna do is take out the screen, take out the guts, this thing weighs a ton, and then put this screen in there and then what i'll do is we'll go in photoshop and we'll just make some computer screens that tie in to the graphics um in my script and it'll be a nice practical prop and again i talk about this a lot too which i've learned over the years is yes i could replace the screen digitally but it looks so much better if i just film something that's there instead of having to go back in later and track the camera movements and put something in there just for like a little background thing sure there'll be a specific like video playing which that i'll track and do all that but 50 60 percent of it is just going to be this in the background so it makes sense to have a practical so this is um not proven <laughs> so you'll never see this intro if this doesn't work but i'm pretty confident it, it'll work so i'm going to take out the guts i'm going to put this in here and then do some slight alterations to this. And then now we have like a 70s looking sci-fi console. And I'm very excited about that. So if you look here in my script, there's a few references to it. So when I build my Photoshop files, they'll support these actions in the text. So simple, straightforward. And again, I wanted to share with you some other options. I've been laser cutting and doing all this stuff. But anybody can go on eBay and buy this stuff. I found what I was looking for. Let's just get into it. Mostly this is going to be ripping out guts, making this photo frame fit. And then, like I said, I might just do a couple doodads, greeblies here. And again, you don't have to 3D print. You can do that however you want. But I'll probably just 3D print it so I can have uh, some graphics that'll tie into the rest of the graphics that are on the set. So let's get into it. Oh, look at that. Takes me back to my first semester of college. <laughs> Do the math. All right, so let's get the keyboard out of the way. Now, the first thing I got to do with this is take it apart. This thing, I mean, it, it literally weighs probably as much as a bowling ball, like 10 pounds. Uh, I, I assume it's that CRT screen. So at first, you know, if I can take this apart, you know, unscrew everything, that's the ideal uh, procedure. But very quickly, it's just going to turn into all right, I don't need these guts at all. I'm reducing weight. This is a prop for one day in a film, and it will slowly digress into just ripping stuff out. So where I can unscrew stuff, I unscrew stuff. You might be different than me. You know, everybody has different processes. Maybe you, you get into, you know, you put on your magnifying glasses and just start uh, dissecting, but me, I put on my safety glasses. <laughs> I'm just gonna cut it open uh, with my Dremel tool with the cutting wheel. Now, again, you know, common sense, be careful when you're doing this. Obviously, this gets sped up, but I am sort of gingerly getting in there. I don't wanna hit metal. I don't wanna cut off one of my fingers. So it's just step by step, right? So it's brutal, but with some thought, if that makes sense. So there's the culprit. That's the main thing I got to get rid of. Now, anything I could do for weight reduction on my way to that, 
is great. It's going to help. So here I kind of got stuck on the CRT screen and then it's like, okay, let's bob and weave. So now let me get rid of the top. So this is all the, the typewriter part of this word processor. I'm pretty sure I mentioned this was an old word processor. So and then anytime you see me flip around and now I'm punching from the front with a screwdriver, basically what's going on is I'm screwing, unscrewing things, cutting things, and then I get stuck. So then it's like, okay, move on, keep the party going, take something off from the front. But here it is, that CRT screen. So again, because we're doing this brutally, I was able to get the front screws off, but those back screws, I can't reach. So I'm gonna cut them off being very careful because this is, I don't wanna crack the screen, who knows if there's gas or the glass, I don't know. I, I, I just don't wanna do that. So here I finally get it out. And this is like, oh, right? This, this was the major chore of prepping this piece to be a prop. So that's out. Looks pretty cool for sure, I'll save that. Who knows, right? That's definitely a hoarder item. <laughs> So now I'm inside there, and because I did everything so uh, jagged and rippy, just, you know, I just want to go through and just sort of clean up all the rough edges. Again, this is not, I'm not going to, to polish it and, and make it look good. This is just the bottom of the prop that I'll be using for one day. My new film is definitely a one-day shoot. So it's a lot of work, but details like this will pay off. So here, just... Uh, whatever grit sandpapers on my, my palm sander, and then the air. Oh, I love my air. I talked about it so much before I had it, now I have it. I mean, I could use it for airbrushes or air power tools, but I just like using it to clean up. All right, so here I just jumped into Tinkercad. I'm gonna have to cover up the little side panels that were clearly for floppy disks, and one was like the, a drive or something. So I just made these simple things in Tinkercad. You could just, um, you know, cut some pieces of plastic, go into your junk bins, use some buttons or knobs from something else and glue them on. I, as I say, because I'm telling a story, I like to make little throwaway pieces like this that include the branding or the logo of the, the piece, the film that I'm making. And then that way it just kind of adds value. I'm on a rocker switch kick <laughs> i made these rocker switches for my control panel in the other video and i just like them so i'm definitely going to cast up uh the rocker switches because it's something i think i'll use a lot more so here i'm just sanding everything the problem right everything nothing's free so the problem is when you do this like i do with the 3d printing the dead giveaway is always the print lines right so if you don't sand it and prime it and paint it when you put it on the piece 3d printing's been around long enough where people just clock it as like oh that's 3d printed so here i got my tamiya primer and then i've through this whole piece i use this quick color this is like the dollar spray paint from home depot um i just find it dries quicker and again in this instance because this is not a lifetime prop just a one day prop it just keeps the party going now here is one of the reasons I love Harbor Freight. This multi-tool, it's something that when I need it, it's so valuable, right? But it's its like, I don't do carpentry or I don't have a job where I need this tool to make my living, but it's amazing to get like the $20 version to have it the one or two times that I uh, need to use it, right? And then this attachment, the attachment I bought from Timu, right? Again, it's like, it's not great quality, but I'm only gonna use this once or twice. Now let's say at the end of the year, I'm like, you know what, I use that tool a lot, then I'll buy the good brand, like the quality one. But in the meantime, it's just nice to have these things on hand. Some people might disagree with that philosophy, but that's my story, stick it to it. <laughs> so now here's the picture frame. Now. This, in my mind, is the magic trick. Now, what I often do, which I don't talk about too much on this channel, but I, I feel it's implied, I never measured this 
that it's going to fit into this word processor that I bought. I've just got my fingers crossed. And, and the only reason I continue like that is typically what I'll do is if I get lucky, it all fits. If I get unlucky, then I gotta figure out a way to make it fit, right? It's the whole square peg round hole. Now is the moment of truth. You, you know, I'm, I'm using common sense when I'm buying things and looking at them and kind of in my head thinking, oh, that looks about the right size. But by no means is this gonna fit. So here, the moment of truth. Can I just slap it back there or am I gonna have to alter it? And it's kind of hard to tell, so I put some green tape on there just to be sure. And it's like, okay. I'm going to be able to proceed as I imagined. <laughs> now, if that didn't fit, obviously this part of the video would be me using foam or some styrene plastic or something to make it fit, but it worked out. So here, now this screen, I do want to be able to see the screen through this sort of, it's like a tinted protective uh, glass, I guess. In the old days with the CRT, it made it more visible. So once I start sanding, painting, and weathering, I want to make sure that that screen stays clear. I will make some adjustments to it to make it match the age of the piece, but before then, I don't want to make any sort of um, scratches or get paint on that that I don't want. I'd rather add it later. So here I'm just getting rid of the text. I'm going to paint this all in a black base coat, but sometimes with the screen printed letters and numbers, they, uh, you know, they have a little bit of height. So you see them through the paint. So I just knocked those down. So again, with my brutal deconstruction of this box, a lot of stuff came apart. I don't know. I might have cut the screws. Who knows? I might have broke the contact points. So I'm just using five minute epoxy to sort of firm this up. And um, I like this five minute epoxy that I get from the um, from the hobby shop, just because it's in those tubes. I always have it in hand. I used to use those single use, but now I just always have it. And, and I like the tools, it is something I use a lot. So now I buy the good stuff. All right. so. A couple of videos ago, anytime I do resin, I have my Evil Ted molds for my Greeblies. And again, I don't want to have that knob on there that to me looks like typewriter. So here I'm just putting in this piece, fill in the hole. Round hole, round piece. <laughs> and then I have that uh, adhesion promoter. I get that from the auto store. I don't know if it works, but I use it. We'll see. So there it is painted. Oh. I have a book that talks about why I make all these props before I have the money for the film. It's my process. Check out the book, link below. So here it is painted. Now I'm gonna do a dry brush. Haven't done this in a while. The reason I painted this black um, and I'm doing the dry brush, there is a reason. So this was the right shape. It was the right vibe, this word processor. But if you leave it that white plastic that is so like obvious what it is, right? And still with the shape, it's obvious what it is, but it's not as, oh, I just bought that on eBay and stuck it in front of the actor. By painting it this color, covering up the floppy disk, gluing down, it makes it something else. So here's my Timu Danger stickers that I like to put on stuff. I always go for the fine print ones because they usually just say silly things, but you just want to give that impression. So while that's drying, uh, the, the little dry brush I did there, I'm going to treat these little 3D pieces. And I, in my mind, I'm going to do this rub and buff thing. This goes a little south. I've had this happen to me before and I forgot about it. So basically what's going to happen is I do the rub and buff. It gives me exactly what I want. And because I painted the piece in a matte, I thought, you know what, these detail pieces, I'm gonna paint them in like a high gloss. And there I have some blue rub and buff. You, you wanna try to use multiple colors just to sort of break it up. And there I'm laughing at myself now because I'm being careful and it's none of it's gonna matter. 
So you see there, right, it's got that gloss. I'm happy about this. And I have this um, glaze that I'm going to put on it. And that looks great. But what happens is when it dries, it just becomes like beyond orange peel. It just becomes a mess. So I have to, I didn't show the process, but there I just sort of sanded them down and made them grungy just to salvage them. So off camera also, I have these little, um, it's like a candy tray that I pour resin in and I made those two little square knobs. Again, th those are just things that I keep around when I get into problems like this, where I was like, oh, that 3D piece <laughs> that I custom made, it was too short, right? Go figure. So now with the resin, it's not very important to do it in a ribbon like that. I just get bored. And the scrape method is to me, that's my fail safe of that. I just mixed it all together. And here I'm just blobbing it on here. Again, this is a prop. It's not going to go anywhere. You could probably adhere this better. I should have uh, rehearsed with some clamps. But then once I got it down there, I reached around to my clamps behind me. And I quickly realized, oh, none of my clamps will reach around this. So I taped it down. It's Again, it's fine for this. So now is the, um, the demasking which is always very satisfying, never gets old. So there I'm revealing the keys. I'm still going to tamp down the gloss on those keys. But again, like I was saying earlier, I, I don't want to get rid of the letters where when I was sanding before uh, I got rid of the letters. I, I do want to have, a, I guess, like a hint, a shadow of them. Right? That sounds good, a shadow. And then these buttons, I just taped them off because sometimes you just want things for actors to be able to beep boop up. So there it is. That's all looking pretty good. I do like those square um, resin pieces that I printed from the, I think it was a candy dish. All right, so now the screen. And again, this screen is too clean, but I didn't want to over muddy it up because it does serve a purpose in the script. We need to be able to see whatever it is that he's dealing with on that screen. So then I'm adding the heat tape. I, I mentioned this in the council video. I was watching some sci-fi show and one of the space modules got in an accident and they put all the screens back together with heat tape. I was like, what is this? And I Googled heat tape. I was like, this is a real thing. Again, I got this on Timu, so it was just like a dollar. And then what I'm doing is, this guy is supposed to have been in this spaceship for like his life, his whole life, right? It's like a work van with over 200,000 miles on it. So the heat tape, again, is just one of these little subliminal things that really just sells like, oh wow, this stuff is such junk that this guy's holding it together with tape. And even on the console, I add uh, pieces of duct tape. Now, even though duct tape is not futuristic, duct tape tells a story, right? It tells a story that you don't have money, but you gotta keep your, your party going. And again, triple checking, right? It's, I, I guess I just couldn't believe that it's gonna work. So I had to remind myself it's gonna work. <laughs> so now I'm getting ready to weather. And what I'm doing is I'm tearing uh, a ragged edge on my masking tape, my painter's tape, so that when I do weather, I will be able to keep this sort of, this border screen, this tinted screen, keep it free of anything that's going to really cloud the works, but also the edges don't, would look weird if they were just crisp. Right, so I'm just going to give it a, a black wash as I do. The blush, the black wash, typically, to me, what it does is it, it sort of mutes everything. And what I'll do is I'll follow through with a paper towel. And what I found over the years is I like instead of wiping it off and leaving it in the uh, crevices, which is the way 
I typically would do this. I've kind of evolved to where I like a blotch, where I just kind of blotch it. I think that's self-explanatory, right? Just blotch, dab, same thing, carry it on the keyboard. I like, you know, I want to do these things together, the keyboard and the, the main piece here, just because I want them to look like they've aged the same. And I forgot on the back I taped that off because you're never going to see the back of it. But what I found will happen is I won't paint the back of it and then we'll be on the shoot day and I'll be like, oh my God, the perfect shot is from behind this. <laughs> so I make sure to hit it. So now this is my three color surprise. What I'll do is I, I have metallics. I think they work the best. I'll just grab what's ever in front of me. In this case, I think it was gold, red, green. Sometimes it's purple or blue. And what I do is I just put a little on my finger, put it on, and then again, dab, take most of it off. And it just breaks it up. Now I get my air. And also what I found uh, with the air is when I'm doing the wash, when the water gets like stuck into deep crevices and I blast it out with the air, it gives it like a really cool pattern. So now this is the nicotine spray that you see me overuse. <laughs> you don't have to use this. You could just uh, seal it with clear and then come back with like a burnt umber wash. I just like the nicotine because it's easier. And again, it's expensive, but I've been doing this long enough where I'll buy the expensive stuff. If I was only doing this once, I would get the dollar craft paint of burnt umber, water that down. Oh, and then you see a good example there, what I mean with the water. Just kind of blast it out. Now you see there, the, the core of that, the center of that is still clean. You can even see my reflection in there, but the edges are not perfect, which like I said, would be weird. So now I'm getting ready to bring it home, right? To put that screen in there. It's that picture frame. And I didn't talk much about the picture frame. What was great about that is I bought a cheap one because it's way out of date, right? It's very low resolution. It's the functionality of it is very minimal. But in this case, it's exactly the look I was going for, right? So if you're going for a more modern, a more clean, a more like Star Trek kind of thing, you might want to use like a refurbished iPad or your own iPad and just sacrifice it one day for the shoot and just make sure that when you install it, you're not doing anything to damage it. So there I just put down some foam because uh, the, the back of that sort of TV screen shape is hard plastic. So I don't want to damage the screen. And then now I'm just simply, you know, I have that buck of the dimensions of the screen and where it needs to be. And here I'm just cutting pieces of foam. I'm going to hot glue them in and I'm just going to make like a cradle. I'm just going to make a shape, a form with hot glue and, and foam. That's just going to hug that screen in there. And here, I mean, I measure, it's important to measure and do things precise, but once I, I, I sort of get on a tear and I, I have a sense of what I'm doing, you know, I, I, I just, for me, it's more important to keep the momentum than to sort of measure things five times. Now, obviously if it was the front and it was a hero piece and it would like needed to do a specific thing and the camera was going to be on it but this is inside so now while the hot glue is drying this is what i did in photoshop just very basic i won't do a photoshop tutorial but this is just sort of the way that i that i pulled this off they're just simple it's like four images that are referred to in the script like he's like he checks like his email that's the home screen that'll be on in the background most of the time. So I have those four images. And then here, I'm just going to, um, this is the arm that'll hug the back of it. <laughs> so I'm just gonna hot glue that in place, a uh, little bit of Velcro, and then that'll just sort of um, press it up against the glass. I, I could have got away with not using this, but I thought 
make sure it's as close as the glass to possible as possible because it's going through that tinted piece so here i'm putting it behind still not believing that it fits yes thumbs up and there she is wow that, that came out really good okay and now this segment i gotta stop calling the beauty shots it's more the isolated detail view <laughs> it's clearly this is just on my bench with a piece of white board behind it but it helps to show off what we did and i'm very happy with that every time i see that screen it makes me smile we stuck two things together from ebay that weren't meant to be stuck together that's what we do yeah <laughs> Pretty cool. Went on eBay, mashed two things together. It's practical, it's simple. I did do a little 3D printing, but you don't have to do that. And I'm very happy with the result. This was one of those things that I had it in my mind, what it could be, and it turned out better. Sometimes that happens, but sometimes you gotta pay because it goes the other way. <laughs> but pretty much almost done with all the sets, props and costumes for my new sci-fi short. We have a Patreon now, so if you join the Patreon, I kind of go in depth about what the new film is going to be about. So I share that sort of stuff on Patreon and it helps me to keep doing this. So check out the Patreon, buy the book, check out the merch. <laughs> I have all that stuff now, but I don't know. It's been over five years, so it's just an evolution, but I'll always continue to do this for free for just because I'm going to do it anyway and I enjoy sharing. <laughs> And speaking of the Patreons, here's our new Patreons that I want to thank. And remember, I'm just here to help make sci-fi. <laughs> Let's kick it to the Avatar. Hey, I'm just the Avatar, but you might want to check out this video, maybe that video. For sure, subscribe if you haven't, and check out the merch. Buy some merch that really helps. But hey, what do I know? I'm just the Avatar. Ha <laughs> ha!